This was a comprehensive study. Any way you look at it, these engineers, experts, accounted for almost everything. They apparently visited the locations, saw all the images, the videos, simulated the physical properties of the canisters, concrete, steel supports, rebars. Everything they could account for, they did, it seems. Here's what they found. At one location, the crater and the chemical canister, simply put, didn't match. Instead, the crater appears to have been caused by an explosive shell before or after. And the canister, the impact crater, just don't match. When a metal can falls through a concrete roof and steel supports, you'd expect it to leave marks, indents, but no consistent marks were found. At another location, the canisters say the authors simply couldn't have fit through the impact crater, with the valve still intact. The only explanation for all of this, the experts state, is that they were placed there. Observations at the scene of the two locations, together with subsequent analysis, suggest that there is a higher probability that both cylinders were manually placed at those two locations rather than being delivered from aircraft. Now, one would think their findings are incredibly important, that they would change the entire narrative. These findings completely contradict what was later put in the official OPCW report on the chemical incident in Douma. A narrative that Assad's helicopters dropped these canisters that was established hours after the incident, with no investigation or questions. A narrative that enabled an armada of cruise missiles to be launched at Syria. The OPCW has admitted that documents had been leaked and say they're investigating how it happened, which hints at the veracity of these documents. They didn't deny their legitimacy. Worryingly, the OPCW has issued no comment on what this specific report found. There were many other reports which the OPCW compiled for their final version on how these leaked findings fly in the face of the OPCW's official report. The leaked documents turn the entire story upside down. And bear in mind, these aren't just random nobodies. We don't know whether this team was part of the OPCW, staff members or outside consultants, experts. And the OPCW is saying nothing other than it uh, looked at all versions and sub-investigations and compiled them. We asked for comment a week ago with a list of questions and there's been no response. Why did they omit this report? Why did they go for one version of events and not the other? Why are they taking so long to comment on this? So far, silence. But, but with the story gaining traction, let's hope for answers sooner or later. Professor Pierce Robinson, who accessed the report, says the OPCW has to address whether or not there's a cover-up going on then over the Duma report. What kind of political pressure might have been brought to bear on the OPCW uh, to lead them to uh, what would appear to be the case to... to suppress or not use a report which one of their staff members had been involved in producing and to rely upon engineering reports from some uh, unspecified external companies. Um, those are the kind of questions which we really need to be asking. And really, the OPCW has to address this. I think more broadly than that, there needs to be a proper investigation into the OPCW and how it has been operating. Because if it is the case that this organization has been subjected to political pressure and that has led to a distortion of their investigations, then that is an incredibly serious matter for a whole number of reasons, quite aside from the fact that with what happened in Douma, civilians were killed and we need to get to the bottom of who killed them, OK? This is a war crime that has occurred. And if there's in any way some kind of cover-up going on, um, that's a very, very serious matter, and it's something which should be... Uh, sort of people should be pushing for a proper investigation, an international inquiry into what has been going on, how the OPCW has been operating, and critically, an investigation to try to understand what has been happening in Syria in relation to all of these events and these allegations regarding chemical weapons attacks.